So in number 11a, we're asked to find the area under the curve of e to the negative x from 0 to 1. And our power of e is something a little bit more complicated than just an x. So we're going to need to use u substitution. So I'm going to go ahead and allow u to be negative x. Differentiating both sides of this equation with respect to x, we get du equals negative dx. I don't need the extra negative, so I'll multiply both sides by negative 1. So our old problem becomes e to the u. It ends with dx, just like this ends with dx. So there's going to be a negative in front, followed by du. And we're going to have to change our limits of integration. Our lower limit, when we were in terms of x, was 0. If I plug that in here, I still have 0, because the opposite of 0 is 0. Now, our upper limit was 1. And if I plug 1 in here, then we get u equals negative 1. And this is great, except our limits of integration are in the wrong order. You're always supposed to have the smaller number on the bottom. But we can fix that by turning it over, turning it upside down, and negating our integral. So let's remove the negative and make it go from negative 1 to 0, e to the u du. Once we take the antiderivative, we end up getting e to the u. And we're going to evaluate that first at 0. So we have e to the 0 minus e to the negative 1. Well, e to the 0 is just 1. And then e to the negative 1 is just 1 over e. So we could leave our answer like this, or we could rewrite this as a single fraction with common denominator e. This would be e minus 1 over e. So either of these would be acceptable. And this is the area under that curve. Let's go on to the next slide. Number 11b, we're supposed to find the area under the curve of e to the x over 1 plus e to the x from 0 to 1. Now, this time the power of e is just plain old x, which is the simplest case, except that we've got this quotient in which both the numerator and the denominator contain an e to the x. It's a little bit more complicated. So what I think I'm going to do is use u substitution, allowing u to be the more complicated expression. In this case, that would be the denominator. So I'm going to allow u to be 1 plus e to the x. Now, if I differentiate both sides with respect to x, the left becomes du. Now, the derivative of 1 is 0, so I'm not going to write anything. And the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. And I'll follow this with a dx. Now, this is really good because that's exactly what we have here in the numerator. So at this point, I can rewrite the initially stated problem exclusively in terms of u. And we're going to end up getting 1 over u. And all of these things that I circled here in blue are the same as these, which is just du. Now, we can't forget to change our limits of integration. So we'll start with the lower limit of 0 and plug that into this. e to the 0 is 1, and 1 plus 1 is 2. So our new lower limit is 2. And our old upper limit was 1. And e to the 1 is 1. So our new upper limit is 1 plus e. That's a little bit weird, but that's in fact what the new upper limit is. OK, so this is an older integration rule, older by only a few lessons but it's not exactly what we're working on currently. You might recall that when we're integrating 1 over u, the antiderivative is the natural log of the absolute value of u plus c. But since this is a definite integral, we're not going to do plus c. We're going to use this special notation. And we're first going to insert or substitute 1 plus e. So it's going to be the natural log of 1 plus e minus the natural log of 2. And you might be wondering why I dropped the absolute value bars. Well, e is about 2.718. And 2.718 plus 1 is certainly something positive. So there's no need for the redundancy of having the absolute value. Now, one thing that I could do is realize that we have a difference of logs. So I can write this as a single log by condensing. This, is the, this would come from the log of a quotient. And that quotient would be 1 plus e over 2. So this expression here represents the area under that curve. Let's go on to the next example. In our next example, we're supposed to find the area under the curve of 
e to the x times cosine of e to the x from negative 1 to 0. So once again, our power of e is x, and this is actually pretty promising. That's the easiest of all cases. But it's still going to warrant u substitution because there are these other things in the integrand, like the cosine and this extra e to the x. So the problem will arise in what to let u equal. So you might think, should I let u equal cosine of e to the x? Should I let u equal just e to the x? Well, these are different things you've got to play around with, and you've got to be willing to try something, and if it doesn't work, try something else. I'm going to allow u to be e to the x. Taking the derivative of this equation with respect to x, we end up getting du equals e to the x dx. And I think this is going to work out perfectly. Now I'm going to take my initially stated problem and I'm, I'm going to just reorder the integrand. And at this point, I'm going to rewrite the originally stated problem exclusively in terms of u. So we end up getting the cosine of u, and then of course, e to the x dx is the same as this e to the x dx, which is simply du. And of course we have to change our limits of integration, and we're going to plug that in for the x over here. So negative 1 becomes e to the negative 1, and e to the 0 is just 1. e to the negative 1 is like 1 over e. And if e can be thought of as very, very roughly as just the number 3, this is like 1 third. So just to check to make sure this is the low number and that's the high number, this, this works. This is fine. So now I've got to ask myself, what is the antiderivative of cosine? And the answer to that would be sine u. And our lower limit is e to the negative 1, and our upper limit is 1. So first I'll substitute in 1, getting me sine 1 minus sine of e to the negative 1. And this is going to give me the area under the curve, reminding you that we have to be in radians for this. So this represents one radian. Now some people might not be comfortable with leaving a negative exponent in the answer, so if you wanted to make one final adjustment, you might say sine of 1 minus sine of 1 over e. But I think either of these would be okay.